Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. We're here on Stand 8 in Manchester for a service up to Edinburgh and for today's video we are focusing on Navigraph as I've had quite a few requests in my comments asking for a tutorial. So, we'll go through the basic settings, how we import our flight plans and add SIDs and STARS along with a brief overview of the charts and then finally I'll also show you how I like to use Navigraph alongside the SIM. So, let's hop over to Navigraph and get started. So when we first load in, we'll be greeted with this screen in the flight section. It's completely empty at the moment, so we need to import a flight. So uh, let's hop over to Simbrief, and I've got a flight planned from here in Manchester uh, up to Edinburgh. So I'll just quickly uh, hit generate flight, and then we'll just wait a couple of seconds for that to do its thing. And there we go. So uh, back over to Navigraph then. And from there we want to hit the import flight button at the top right there and that will give us a couple of options we can either import a flight plan file or we can import from simbrief so we'll click that and then click the top one there which will be our most recent flight plan so there we go that's populated everything we need for our flight so from here in manchester at the top here we're going to be departing runway 05 left on the pole hill 4 sierra sid uh, and then arriving into edinburgh runway 06 on the Impip one Echo Star. And from there, we can also select our arrival. So we'll select ILS runway 06 and then add to route. And there we go, so that's added our approach. And then uh, right at the bottom, we've also got our alternate destination, which is Glasgow Prestwick. So that's all our departure and arrival information looking good. Let's click the View Sim Brief button there at the top, and that brings up our Sim Brief OFP. So we've got uh, all our planned fuel, our weights, uh, our routing, cost index, and all that good stuff. Uh, so that's all fine. And from there, if we click the green dot below our departure, it brings up our current weather in Manchester. So we've got our wind, visibility, clouds, temperature, humidity, and QNH as well. And uh, we can also check the TAF and also our ATIS. If, for example, uh, a VATSIM controller was online, uh, the latest information would appear there as well. OK, so let's turn our attention to the sort of main window then and look at a few more options we've got in there. And we'll start with this uh, little bar on the left hand side here. And if we click the little map icon at the top, it brings up our map presets. So we can select world map or we could choose satellite if we prefer. I'm just going to leave it on IFR high for now, which is the default. And then the next button down we can toggle various map layers, so we can have uh, airspace layers, uh, we've got airports, uh, general map settings and base map layers again. I'll leave these as default. And then moving down we can also toggle night mode or day mode if we prefer. We'll come back to the little triangle in a second because that's quite cool. Uh, but the bottom button just uh, zooms out to uh, like an overview of your entire flight. Okay, so the little triangle there, let's click that. And this is a really neat little feature. So once we've got our SIM linked into Navigraph, it'll show us uh, exactly where we are in the world. So if we just zoom in, uh, you can see the little pink triangle. And we zoom right in on Manchester, and there we are, sitting on Stand 8. And from there we can also choose another couple of options. We can centre the map on our plane, and it will follow us or we can change the orientation, uh, so that's quite handy if we're taxiing, it makes it a bit easier to find our way. Uh, so that's quite nice as well. Let's just flip that back, there we go. Right, so if we turn our attentions to the very top bar, we can see all our waypoints across the top there, along with our SID and our STAR. And we can also edit this if we want to, so say for example we wanted to remove this uh, SHAP waypoint, uh, we find it at the top there, click the three buttons and press remove and that's uh, taken it out of our flight plan. And then we can also add in any waypoints we'd like as well. So if I click on this Uvavu waypoint, uh, that opens up a separate window and then all we've got to do is click add to route and that brings up another window and we need to choose whereabouts we need to add it. So I will put it after Ergab like that and then hit add and there we go. So it's quite straightforward to sort of dynamically edit as we go. So moving on to our charts then, if we look at the bar right along the bottom we can see it's automatically picked all our charts required for our departure and also our arrival. So if we click on the airport chart for Manchester uh, and zoom in a little bit again we can see ourselves sitting on stand 8 there. And it's also selected our departure chart. I'll 
click on that. So there we go, fairly straightforward departure out of here to Pole Hill. And we can also uh, overlay the charts on the map, which is again a nice cool feature. We click on that little layers button there, and that will show us both the, the map and the chart overlaid. So that's cool, let's just switch that off. And we can also um, annotate our charts, which is again a really nice feature. And all we need to do is click this little orange pencil icon at the top right and that will bring up our annotation menu and this is a really handy tool for highlighting any constraints or information on the charts that we think is important so uh, for example on our departure chart here we could uh, put a box around this where it says uh, runway 05 left expect close in obstacles and you can also draw freehand on the chart as well so if I was briefing a departure for you guys on one of my videos and I wanted to put an arrow on or something like that or um, just as a reminder we could highlight our initial clearance altitude of 5,000 feet by drawing a circle around it like that. So yeah, really handy little feature. So that's our departure charts. We've also got all our arrival charts automatically selected for us as well. Uh, so we've got our star there and we've also got our approach chart for runway 06 and also our airport chart for Edinburgh as well. So. We don't have to scroll through reams and reams of charts, they're all, they're all there for us, so very handy. OK, so finally then, I'd just like to show you how I would normally use Navigraph alongside the SIM, so let's just minimise that. And what I'd normally do here is double check everything in our flight matches with what we have in the plane. So we've got runway 05 left on the Pole Hill for Sierra SID, so over to the FMS, and we'll click on our departure and we are runway 05 left on the Pole Hill for Sierra SID and we'll hit insert. So that's kind of how I cross-reference um, what we have in Navigraph to what we have in the plane. I also like to pop the nav display into plan mode and sort of uh, zoom in a little bit and sort of cross-reference um, what we have on the nav display to the chart. So I'll try and get that side by side for you as well. So back to Navigraph then and we will go to our departure chart uh, which is just there now, as you can see it saves all our annotations as well till we delete them off so that's quite cool as well and let's just switch the overlay off and we will zoom in a little bit so we can clearly see uh, both our planes are pointing in the same direction and uh, our first waypoint is going to be out to Delta 0516 and if I just hop back down to the FMC and scroll down to the next couple of waypoints uh, we can just compare those as well so we've got Delta 179 Lima and Delta 179 Hotel so everything's looking good for our departure and that is pretty much it guys and just for full disclosure before I finish this isn't a sponsored video I do pay for my own Navigraph subscription um, but I would probably say that it is my most important add-on for the sim and for the added levels of immersion in my opinion it is totally worth paying for I think if you buy a year in advance it works out about nine pounds a month so there you have it. That concludes my Navigraph Basics tutorial. I hope you found the video useful, maybe you learnt something new. If you did, give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.